So, uh, you know, one of the points that we make in this uh, report that indeed there's uh, first signs of fragmentation emerging uh, in the world economy uh, amidst uh, rising trade policy tensions. So, for example, one uh, thing that we uh, find in the report, one finding that we have in the report is if you divide the world into uh, two hypothetical uh, blocks along geopolitical lines based on uh, voting patterns at the UN National, um, uh, at the UN General Council, uh, what you see is that um, the trade, you know, within these hypothetical blocks is growing faster than the trade between these uh, hypothetical blocks uh, uh, since the onset of the war in Ukraine, which uh, suggests uh, some move towards uh, French oring. But at the same time, uh, as you also uh, pointed out, you know, overall, you know, we don't see any uh, massive uh, uh, deglobalization. I think, you know, talk of deglobalization is uh, is exaggerated. So these are really just first signs of fragmentation that are emerging. Yeah, these first signs of, of, of fragmentation mean that your notion of suggesting re-globalization, that becomes a little bit harder to achieve, no, doesn't it? Well, you know, the way I think about it is we really had a, a fundamental change in uh, in the narrative. You know, the narrative has become much more uh, trade skeptic and that has, you know, fed into uh, trade policy tensions, which are now uh, having effects on uh, on economic outcomes. So so there's certainly pressure uh, on the system, but there's also still time to act. And the point we are trying to make in the uh, in the report is really that if you want to uh, build a, a secure uh, and inclusive and also a sustainable a world economy, you need to embrace international trade. So let me uh, take sustainability as an example, because I think there's uh, really a lot of confusion. You know, when people think about trade, they think about transport. If they think about transport, they think about emissions. You know, but really, uh, you know, transport emissions are only a small share of overall emissions, and there's huge variation in production emissions across countries. So really, you know, if you want to uh, have a sustainable economy, what you also need to uh, make sure is that you source goods from relatively green uh, origins. You know, we call this green sourcing. And in that sense, you know, trade can be an important part of the solution. So that's just one example how I think we really need to embrace trade if we want to um, uh, tackle or address some of the main challenges we are facing today. Ralph, you talk about this multilateral trading system and how there are these connections and links to prosperity and peace. Now, as we talk about de-risking in a world where there's a war playing out and, and the countries are forced to, to pick a side, does that mean we're talking about less peace and less prosperity down the track? Well, I think the main, uh, so so we do talk about uh, security, but the main uh, emphasis is on uh, economic security, so resilience of supply chains. And here, I think the evidence is quite clear. You know, the best uh, uh, so, uh, the best way to have economic security is to have uh, deep and diversified supply chains and an open uh, multilateral trading system is the best way uh, to get this, because if you have supply shocks that are uh, that are hitting you, having access to outside options is key, and and an open multilateral trading system is exactly uh, you know what uh, what gives us these outside options. Now, in terms of you know where we're heading, um, you know I really think we had a we had a crossroads. As I was uh, saying, that these fast signs of fragmentation at the same time, you know nothing really uh, dramatic has happened so far in terms of trade flows. So I think this is really the time uh, to decide uh, where we want to go. And I think we have a, a very clear view on uh, on what the best path forward would be.